here we are. I feel like this is probably a, a rite of passage. My first broken end mill. I knew it was going to happen too. It was just a bad situation. So what, what basically happened is the end mill I was using previously is not long enough to get through the full thing. And I should have thought of that to begin with and chosen a, a larger end mill. Uh, so I got to the, the limits of that and then realized I was out of space and had to go rummaging. And all I had was this four flute, really long end mill and it was slightly larger than it needed to be, which is part of the problem. So it was binding up a little bit. It's dull as the Dickens because this came with came with the mill. And yeah, you could just you could hear it, you could see it kind of deflecting. Uh, it was taking a lot more effort to turn the the rotary table, and there it went. So lesson learned: use the right tool. Don't use dull end mills, but. It wasn't quite as terrifying as I expected, so that's kind of nice. Um, not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I don't think I have a suitable substitute, and I don't really want to pull this thing all apart to drill a new hole for a larger end mill. And unfortunately, there's just not enough clearance with this whole stack up to get the drill bit in there. So I might just order an end mill that I need. I don't know, we'll see. So as it turns out, I don't actually have a three to four inch micrometer. Um, so I'm using a four to five inch with a one inch standard to measure the telescoping gauge. It's probably not the most accurate because things are kind of tilted this way and that, but it's more accurate you know, than this cheapo. So we are currently at 3.091 and I need 3.11. So I've got 19 thousandths left to go on a final pass. So I'll do that in one pass and then do a spring pass and that part should be done. I am right at 1.01, .01, which means I am 9 thousandths off. I missed it. Okay, so we are at 3.108, so we're 2 thousandths off what I was aiming for. I think that is probably fine.
I was getting ready to cut the the slot and the support here and I'm like, oh, perfect. I'll just use a slitting saw and I don't need to get the overarm support out and switch up the heads because the slitting saw will do just fine. There's not a lot of material to move here, uh, except the biggest slitting saw that I have is only three inches across and that is not nearly enough to clear just the size of the spindle, which coincidentally is also three inches. Um, and actually I don't even have a saw big enough for this in general. I have a four inch that I could mount on the, uh, the horizontal, but you know, that's only gives me an inch clearance, which is not really enough to cut all this. Uh, so that sucks. Well, you know what they say, if it's stupid and it works, it's probably unsafe. Which I'm pretty sure this is gonna be unsafe. This is not a centered hole. <laughs> right, so rather than set up the rotary table like I did last time, uh, which was kind of a pain, uh, I'm just going to use this circle drill. Um, this is a carpentry circle drill. I do think it is, it's like a bimetal uh, bit, but it's, you know, not designed for metal. Uh, I did do a test. I ran it right through the existing hole and it works. It's not great. You have to go kind of slow, but it gets the job done. And I just need to take off a little bit on this edge. So this will be a lot faster and easier than setting up the whole uh, Rube Goldberg rotary contraption. You know, yeah, I'm just going to move it over about a quarter of an inch there. And we'll just pop it through, see how it goes. Right, third time's a charm. Right, so I think the takeaway from this project is I am just very bad at machining. <laughs> or more specifically, I am bad at measuring. So as you can probably see here on the video, there is a huge gap between the shaft and the bottom of the hole, which was not intended. It should have been this distance. Instead, it's basically double that. Um, what I think happened is I measured how much I wanted the distance to be, but then I didn't take into account the kerf of these saws. This isn't the one I used, it's a different one, but the kerf is similar. Uh, and it's a pretty good sized kerf. Uh, the blades are kind of jagged like that because it's a, a wood blade. So the kerf is actually a lot wider than it looks when you just measure the metal, you know, the, the body of the blade. It's actually quite a bit wider from these, these teeth. And then on top of that, there's a fair amount of run out on these. I noticed once it was digging into the metal. So the effective kerf is even a bit wider than even the outside of these teeth. So with all that combined and probably not being super careful with my measurements, <laughs> this hole is enormous. Uh, I don't think it'll be a problem. I'll just put, print a asymmetric bushing uh, so that the bushing itself will have a lot more space down here than at the top. Uh, it is, however, just super irritating because it looks like garbage now. And it left a pretty small slice here at the bottom, which I don't think will be structurally a concern 
because if I need anything heavy, I'll actually just get out, you know, this uh, overhead arm rather than using this one. Uh, so I'm not super concerned about that. It's just aesthetically, it irritates me. But I think that'll do for this video. It's been like a year and change since this video was supposed to come out. Uh, and there's another project I want to use the mill on. So I'll get the CAD files built up for this bushing in the next video. We'll print it out and then get this whole shindig on the mill and try it out, see if it works. Or if it just, you know, fails entirely. So that's all for this time and we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully not a year from now. Thank you.